Hey, what's up, guys? Eyes open in California here. So today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. Now, two days ago, I woke up from a dream. It was a really quick dream, but it's very important. So the dream goes like this. In this dream, I'm having a debate with somebody. And they're telling me everything in the Bible is true. And I'm saying, no, it's not. The Bible is a book. It can be edited by anybody. And they're like, no, everything in the Bible is true. It's the uncorrupted word of God. And I said, no, it's not. And they said, give me an example. And I said, the book of Leviticus. They said, yeah. I said, it's mostly demonic. And they said, what are you talking about? I said, Leviticus 1, satanic. Leviticus 2, satanic. Leviticus 3, satanic. And then there was like a time lapse. And I said, Leviticus 18, hatred. Leviticus 19. And then I woke up. And that was the end of the dream. So I was basically giving the one word summary of each chapter. And that's what I was giving to that person. This is like my third dream telling me that the book of Leviticus is mostly demonic. So um, that, that was the end of the dream. So everybody out there who's, who's, who thinks that everything written in the Bible, um, like those things that they think they came from God, they, they did not. A lot of the things written in the Bible are the commandments of men. That's why Jesus said, you're teaching for doctrines, the commandments of men. And Jesus said it himself. So um, real quickly, let me, let me share my screen. I want to show you something. So this is uh, Leviticus chapter 1. And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man, if any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. And if his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Satanic. Leviticus 2. And when any will offer a meat offering unto the Lord, his offering shall be a fine flour. And he shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. Um, and I'll just skip down here. And the remnant of the meat offering shall be Aaron's and his sons. And it is the most holy of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. And if thou shalt bring an oblation of a meat offering, bacon in the oven, satanic. Satanic. There's Leviticus 3. And if his oblation be a sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be a male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before the Lord. Satanic. You can't, you can't do a satanic animal sacrifice and say that it's for the Lord. That's satanic. You can't kill an animal and spill its blood and burn it and dance around a fire. It's satanic. I'm going to skip over to um, Leviticus 18. Actually, I mean, just read Leviticus 18 yourself. Um, there are some things in it that are just pure hatred. And, and the church has taken some of these things and just created hatred towards their neighbor about some of these things. And um, it's, uh, let me skip down here. Where is that? Leviticus 18.22, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And this one right here, more spe specifically, Leviticus 18.22, this is hatred. God never said this. I am not gay by any means. Believe me, I am not gay by any means. But I've had many, many, many dreams about this. This right here is going to get a lot of Christians in trouble. That did not come from the Lord. That is hatred. 
So getting back to Leviticus, um, to the beginning of it, all this animal sacrifice nonsense, um, this is satanic. The, the Lord never said, and the Lord never required this ever. He, he didn't require animal sacrifice. All the prophets were telling everybody to stop. They're like, what are you doing? Stop. And I'll show you right now. This is Isaiah chapter one. God has had enough. This is uh, Isaiah 1, uh, verse 10. I'll just start reading. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So the Lord was speaking through the prophet Isaiah. He was saying, stop doing this. And it's satanic. You can't, you can't kill an animal and offer it to something. That's it's satanic. So not everything in the Bible is of God. A lot of those things are, are the commandments of men. A person said that God wanted animal sacrifice. God never said that. So let me just give you an example. And I'm not, I'm not saying throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because it says in Exodus, look, the Lord didn't come to start Christianity. He came to straighten out Judaism. The Lord was a Jew. He didn't come to start a new religion. Paul's phony baloney nonsense started a new religion. The Lord came to straighten out Judaism. But the Lord... The, look, it says in Exodus, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, and foot for foot. It says in Leviticus, breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. As he, as he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. It says in Deuteronomy, and thine eye shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. This is what it says in the Old Testament. Right? But then the Lord says in Matthew 5, 38, you have heard that it hath been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. So th the Lord referenced this whole eye for an eye thing that was mentioned in the Old Testament, but he straightened it out. He straightened it out. Do you get what I'm saying? He came to straighten out what people had wrong in Judaism. He didn't come to start Christianity. Um, Paul started his own thing, but the Lord didn't come to start Christianity. He came to, he came to put to 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 write the wrong things. He came to put the wrong things in the correct place. Do you get what I'm saying? So when the Lord references something from the Old Testament, he's straightening it out. He was like, I never said an eye for an eye. Do you get what I mean? So um so anyways, that's that, right? And then um in Leviticus 19, this is where the Lord first said, 
Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So in these Old Testament scriptures, there are bits of truth. This is Leviticus 19. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And this is, um, this is what the Lord says. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So let me quit sharing my screen here for a second. So this is what I dreamt, just to recap real quick, or really quickly. Um, I was having a conversation with someone. I told them not everything in the Bible is true. Not, not everything that people are believing is came from God. That there's a lot of commandments of men in there, and you need to be able to differentiate between the two, between what is of God and what is of man. Now, I showed you Isaiah 1. Clearly, all of these rules and things regarding animal sacrifice did not come from the Lord. Because the Lord said, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me? That's what he said in Leviticus 1, or in uh, Isaiah 1. So Leviticus 1, satanic. Leviticus 2, satanic. Leviticus 3, satanic. Leviticus 18, hatred. And, and, and in the dream, I was, I was giving the one word, um, basically like bottom line, per chapter. So uh, I've had a dream about Deuteronomy um, that th that dream was uh, everybody was in a prison and they were on they were on some sort of a carousel. And in order to partake in that carousel, in order for them to clip you so you could walk on the carousel, you had to have read Deuteronomy. And once people got clipped onto the carousel, they turned into a cow um god has been showing me this um for many years that there's there's many there's many deceptions in these scriptures and so um i just want to tell you the truth was written on your heart it says it says in the old testament that uh the lord will come and make a new covenant with the people and he will write the law on their heart and you don't like necessarily have to see it written in a book it's written on your heart if you truly have a relationship with god and you're reading something that just doesn't feel right you have the right in fact you have the obligation to ask god is this real like like for reals i'm supposed to believe that you can ask god that you're not going to offend god god is a creator of heaven and earth you're not going to offend god god is not one of these triggered sensitive babies that plagues this this world right now you're not going to offend god by by inquiring about the truth because spirit and truth equals rapture if if you want out you're going to have to diligently seek the truth and unfortunately um you're going to have to do a lot of the legwork yourself uh, i'm trying to do as much of it as i can for you um, but at some point in time, you're going to have to do some of this like work yourself, that everything written is true. And a lot of the things that were written were actually satanic, like just through and through. Just think about it. So anyways, um, that's what I dreamt two days ago. And I wanted to get this message out because there's still a lot of people that I speak to and they still believe that the Lord required animal sacrifice. And it's, it's, it's far from the truth. In fact, it's the complete opposite. The Lord wanted mercy and, and judgment and, and righteous actions. He wanted people to plead for the widow and to, to adopt the, the kids, that, to, to judge the fatherless. That's, that's what God wanted. That's true worship. So there's one more thing I want to show you. Give me one second. I'm gonna I'm gonna research this. Um, um, just give me one second. I'll be right back.
Okay. So I got that. Let me show my screen one more time. I'm going to pull up something from the Gospel of the Holy Twelve. It's very important that you understand the 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 point of this video. This is um, Gospel of the Holy Twelve, Lection Thirty Three. By the shedding of blood of others is no remission of sins. Jesus was teaching his disciples in the outer court of the temple, and one of them said unto him, Master, it is said by the priests that without shedding of blood there is no remission. Can then the blood offering of the law take away sin? And Jesus answered, No blood offering of beast or bird or man can take away sin, for how can the conscience be purged from sin by the shedding of innocent blood? Nay, it will increase the condemnation. So this also is a book. And like all books, everything has been tampered with. Everything has been tampered with. You have to take every single thing that you read and every single thing that you hear, you have to take it to God yourself. Everything. Take everything I'm telling you to God. God will confirm what I'm telling you. So I'm going to read this again. And Jesus answered, No blood offering of beast or bird or man can take away sin. For how can the conscience be purged from sin by the shedding of innocent blood? Nay, it will increase the condemnation. So that's what the Lord said. Personally, I lean towards that last bit where it says no offering of man can um, can take away your sin. I think somebody threw that in there, to be quite honest with you. Because uh, in a separate dream, I was told, it was a really quick dream, I was told this. Many men have been crucified, but only one paid for our sins. So... Obviously, the Lord paid for our sins. But anyways, um, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Everybody wants to have this security blanket. You want to have this, this, this assurance. You want to have this 100% assurance that what you're reading is the truth. And if it's in a book, it's already been edited. People have already had the ability to add stuff and alter stuff and and change stuff. And that's why you have to have a relationship with God. Having a religion, it's not going to get you anywhere. You have to have a relationship with God. Take everything you read. Take it. And ask God about it. And I, I highly encourage you all to read my community posts in order from the oldest to the newest. Read them. Shake your head up and down if you agree. Or shake your head side to side if you disagree. I really don't care. But read it and then take it to God. And then when God confirms it, then shake your head up and down. Because that is the truth. God has been trying to show people the truth for thousands of years. But nobody's listening. I know this video is starting to get long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it short. But I want to tell you, I wanna I wanna finish with with this final thought. Everybody right now says that they worship Jesus, right? They say that if they had lived in the days when Jesus walked in earth, that they too would have been a devout follower of the Lord. But I don't believe that's the case at all. Because I've had many, many, many a conversation with many, many, many a Christian. And they all say, no, the Bible's the uncorrupted word of God. You can't say anything that contradicts the Bible. And then I say, well, if you were alive back in the days when Jesus was alive, would you have believed him? And they said, yeah. And I said, how do you know? How could you be so sure that you would have followed the Lord? How could you be so sure that you would not have been one of those people who yelled, Crucify him, crucify him. Because one of the things that they accused the Lord of was preaching against the scriptures. 
he the scriptures that he was preaching against are the things that men had altered and the lord was trying to bring everybody back to the truth and they got mad at him for it and right now at this very time god is showing people the truth and when the messengers are trying to teach people the truth they're saying oh that goes against the scriptures but that's the exact mentality of the people who yelled crucify him so i just want to leave you with this i'm telling you right now i am not jesus but um but how can you be so sure that you would have worshiped the lord when he walked in earth how can you be so sure don't the only way to The only way to really be able to answer that question is, is if you're the kind of person who receives new information, you pass no judgment on it. You say, okay, we'll see what God says about that. And then pray on it. Granted, I am uh, presuming that you have been baptized by water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But once that, after the age of 11, uh, also, there's a certain age where you have to do it again. It's it's around 11. But um, if you've been properly baptized, then run the new piece of information by God and let God filter out for you what is fact and what is fiction. But see, that's not what's happening today. What's happening today is the body of Christ says, nope, that's not what it says in my scripture. I'm not listening to it. And it's like, you're not listening to the truth? They're like, that's not the truth. The truth is written in my book. And it's like, well, if you're so quick to shut down the truth, then how do you, how can you really be certain that had you been alive back in the days, you also would not have yelled crucify him? Do you get what I'm saying? Because the Lord was preaching the truth. And a lot of the, the truth, a lot of the preachings we're literally against some of the scriptures. The Lord did it. So why don't people have ears to hear the truth now, yet they call themselves followers of the Lord? So anyways, um, I'll bring this video to a close. That's what I dreamt the other day, that uh, all this animal sacrifice stuff, it's satanic. And um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of hatred in the church because of some of the things that are written and some of the things that are written, they didn't come from God. I'll, I'll just leave you with this. And I, I, I'm going to sound like a broken record. I've had many, many, many dreams about this. And granted, I'm not gay by any means in no way, shape or form am I gay, but God showed me this like so many times. It's, 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 I'm sounding like a broken record, but I'm going to end with this. One would do far better on the day of judgment, if they were gay and a good Samaritan and a good neighbor, than if they were straight and a bad Samaritan and a bad neighbor, love covers a multitude of sins. So don't let what's written in Leviticus 18 um, cause you to hate because you're just gonna get yourself in trouble. Believe me when I say this, if some someone who lives an alternative lifestyle worships God and loves God with all their heart and they love their neighbors as themselves, they're going to do just fine. So anyways, uh, this is Eyes Open in California. Thank you. God bless you. A lot of people are going to disagree with this message, but then I tell you, and you're only disagreeing with the truth. I'm trying to help you. So God bless and have a good day.